Welcome to this edition of El Cara Ham Radio YouTube, and uh, what are we going to cover today? Well, we just had a hands-on session with El Cara uh, here locally with our club, and we discussed many topics dealing with grounding and bonding. And of course, when you start talking about those kinds of topics, lightning uh, protection also comes up. And I've got a two meter antenna here, uh, Comet GP3, that uh, I've already done a video on, so I'll try to put that card up in the top right corner. And I've got 120 feet of cable going mostly along the gutter line here and then over to the other side and into my office. And I've been kind of worried about it. Well, maybe worried's a too strong a word, but I'm concerned. And after having the grounding and bonding session, I thought, you know, I really need to do something about this. So I have, uh, I actually purchased some MFJ Guardian Angel Lightning Surge Protectors. And I've never used them. I've probably had them a year and a half. And now it's about time I pulled them out of the box and did something with them. So come along in this video. We'll show you the relatively simple installation of these surge protectors here on El Cara Ham Radio YouTube channel. I'm KY4BDP, and we'll see you in the next segment. Welcome to Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. You can find us at elcara.net, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. If you're enjoying the videos we're producing here at El Cara, Please help our club out by hitting that subscribe button. Also, give us some feedback on our videos. Click the like button, share with anybody who may find it interesting, and be sure and hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified of the next video release. Alrighty, so I was rummaging around in my shack and came across some things I had purchased some time ago. The MFJ Guardian Angel Lightning Surge Protector. It uh, goes by part number MFJ270. And I bought several of these at the time thinking, well, heck, I'm, I'm going to need these at some point. And sure enough, I put them in a box and I forgot about them. Well, as I mentioned, we just had a session and I thought, well, let's pull these out. Let's do a quick video on how to utilize these uh, surge protectors. And so what we're showing you here, I've actually got a couple uh, out of the uh, packaging or not. In, they're in the packaging, but they're out of the box. I had them in and just kind of want to show you a little bit later. I'll uh, show the installation. You'll get an idea of how large these are. These are these are not very large at all. And what's also really neat about these is they use a little gas discharge uh, item to protect against static and lightning surges. And you can actually replace the, the discharge uh, uh, element if you wish. There are other brands of these MFJ uh, surge protectors out there. Um, that have different ends, and there are also different vendors that sell these. Uh, my Elmer, AC4DM, and others are really big on the Alpha Delta versions of these. And uh, at the time, I just hadn't bought those. This is a year and a half ago. And uh, so I thought, well, let's let's put these into play. And so the cool thing about these is they just, they just go in line. Uh, you have a grounding lug on the bottom, which I'm actually going to replace that, uh, that little uh, circle connector. And then on top is the actual uh, gas discharge tube uh, that you're going to uh, uh, replace if it were to be struck. This is the back side, of course. You can kind of read through some of the elements on the packaging there. Uh, but it's a, a pretty simple installation. Now, I bought the female to female. If I had to do it again, I would have bought male to female ends because it would have actually made the installation a little bit easier. But nonetheless, I, with a little cable extension, I was able to get it to work. Now here we're looking at the actual MFJ out of the packaging, and you can see that uh, uh, it, it's, it's handsome. Uh, there's not much to it, but uh, it doesn't look bad at all. You've got your two female ends, and then on top you've got the gas discharge uh, element, and on the bottom you have the grounding lug that uh, we'll show you how to connect that here in just a few minutes. What I've done here is I've actually taken the, the gas discharge uh, element out. Uh, it just uh, lives just underneath that uh, round cylinder that you see at the top right above my fingers. And you can see with my big meaty hands coming in about how big it is. Not large at all. And if you look down in that hole you can see the actual connectivity for your actual radio signals. And uh, that's all there is to it. There isn't a whole lot to this. Next, you're going to need a grounding rod uh, potentially, or something to ground to. Uh, you might have a, a water pipe or something like that. Uh, I have a grounding rod that I purchased. I'm already using one of these grounding rods for uh, grounding my HF station. 
And I thought, I've got another one. I actually had yet another one of them, and I gave them to KY4CKP, and I think he's going to use it with his antenna set up. But a grounding rod, you know, typically with grounding rods, um, people like to see them go six, eight feet in the ground. This one's about four and a half, five feet long. No, so it's not eight feet, but it should do the job. And you'll notice I've got some number eight wire there that I'm going to actually use from the grounding rod to the mounting lug on the actual protector, lightning protector. So um, relatively straightforward uh, pieces of, of uh, material that you can buy at your big box stores or online from one of your favorite places. Hopefully smile.amazon.com. Now, I'm looking at the back of my radio here, and you can see it's just sitting on my office desk, and it allows me to monitor the repeater and so forth. I also participate in the nets that we have uh, two or three times a week. The problem is, is it's not grounded. It's in the middle of my office, and uh, I, I just have never grounded it. So I've been a bad boy, and what I'm showing you is the cable going along the floor there. It's going to come up to the window, and we're using one of the Comet, uh, or I'm using one of the Comet window jumpers to go through my window. So you can see that kind of silver uh, foil uh, with the cable going from the cable from the radio to the Comet window jumper to the outside, and there's another end to the Comet window jumper, or jumper on the other side. I need to mount the surge protector between the cable coming from the antenna and this window jumper, but remember, I have female to female ends. If I had to do it over again, I would have gotten male to female. It would have gone a little better, but I can use a little patch cable to make this work. So now I'm on the outside looking at the other end of the window jumper, and you can see the antenna cable goes right into the window jumper. And what I'm going to do is insert a small length of cable and the uh, surge protector in between the antenna and this window jumper. So I'm just showing you where how it currently looks before we do the installation. Now here's the grounding rod outside, and I need to put it someplace. Uh, ideally, you want soil somewhere uh, around your house that is conductive. If it's a little bit moist, uh, even the better. Um, but you don't want it right next to your house, but at the same time, I don't want to run this you know, 10, 15 feet away from the house. So I need to uh, place uh, this grounding rod into the ground. Now, as I started poking around in and around my flower bed here, I found that there, it was pretty rocky, so I couldn't put it exactly where I wanted it, but I ended up uh, knocking it into the ground pretty good. So I got most of the four and a half, five foot length in the ground, and you can see the attachment lug there at the top. So part of the 8-gauge uh, wire is going to go into this grounding lug, and part of the 8-gauge, or the other end of the 8-gauge wire, is going to mount to the actual MFJ270. So the main thing here is to make sure that you get it nice and deep, as deep as you can, for your particular uh, environment. And uh, it's actually a pretty, pretty piece of copper. Here we've actually attached the 8-gauge wire. I bought the 8-gauge uh, wire from a big box store that uh, most of you have probably heard of. And then what I'm going to do is run this section of wire back to the MFJ surge protector. So in this case, I'm just going to go around this copper wire. But the, the main thing is make sure you get good contact. What I do is I actually double back this copper gauge wire. It's not strand. It's, it's a solid core so that when I do tighten that screw that you see on the lug, I make good contact. Now this is on the other end, and there was nothing on the end of this wire to begin with. It was just bare wire. I purchased some of these uh, lugs, uh, these uh, round connectors, copper uh, 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 grounding, uh, copper lugs, if you will, um, for uh, these kinds of projects, and I added it to the end of this wire. Now I squeeze this incredibly hard. You might think, well, Brian, why don't you solder that? Well, if it's actually going to get struck by lightning, the solder doesn't help you. You need a good physical connection. So you need to just squeeze this extremely hard to make a really good physical connection. And now you can see I've attached it to the surge protector on the grounding lug side or the grounding side where you attach the wire. So at this point, the shielding on my cable is grounded. So it should help if I were um, uh, having static electricity building up on the shielding on the outside of the cable, and if it gets struck by lightning, the gas discharge element will actually uh, short and ground that to this copper wire instead of going out uh, into my radio. At least that's the theory, right? So you can see just yet another view of that. Very simple installation, but also a very necessary thing to do. Well, I'm KY4BDP for the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. If you don't have one of these in line, 
go get them. There's different vendors out there. Have a great day, and give us a thumbs up on this video and subscribe. Thank <laughs> you.